Here in just a second. Today's actually a load is what's going to end up being, but hopefully it's a good one. All right, guys, welcome to Last Cast here live on our Instagram, as well as those of you who are listening currently online or through our podcast channels we have. Thank you for tuning in today. Today's actually a really kind of a special episode. We have a lot of information to go over, and we're going to do our best to keep it tight and lean, but give you everything you need. And hopefully it'll help you out with your business to help salvage it. If you are running short on money or you don't know how you're going to get by for the next month, maybe up to two months, we're going to give you some good, hopeful information that's going to get you where you need to be and let you know that there is a lot of opportunities out there for you to catch, I guess, or jump in on things that will help you keep your business afloat during this difficult time. Before we do that, though, if you know, if you've been following us, we always start off our show with good news. So right now, before we get into it, I, don't, I just want to say hi to my wife. Hi. <laughs> she's, if you're watching online or watching on Instagram, you'll see she's wearing our special new. I'm wearing my craft today. Her craft, mm -hmm. yes, which we'll go into it's and a, talk about it's this. It's a COVID uh, neck cozy uh, scarf. Yeah. I think we should start selling these things. I think it's cool. I might even wear something like that. Yeah. The thing is, you got to make it. Yeah, you yeah, you have to it. make it. But I will show you a way to cheat. So you can just cheat by t tearing up an old garment in your closet. Yeah. And by the way, this is day 15 for us in our lockdown. Some of you guys, I've been saw some more states today, just joined in the party. And we're basically eventually going to see this whole country shut down, I'm sure. And uh, that's unfortunate, obviously, for all us beauty professionals, because unfortunately, the government doesn't see us as essential. I would vouch that there are a lot of women right now saying that is not true, that this is an essential service, but it's best that we stay home and do the right thing and try to flatten the curve, right, as they say, and take care of everything and do the right thing for our industry and for our country, not in the world really, for everyone. So it's, I know it's tough for us to make these sacrifices, but in the end, bigger picture, right now let's all work together, hang in together. And after this episode, I hope you're gonna have a lot more information that's gonna help you stay afloat during this difficult time. First, let's always talk about some good news because I'm sure a lot of you keep hearing a lot of bad news, but there is some cool stuff going on and we definitely wanna make, um, at least point it out and, and applaud it where give it is. Cool stuff. Yeah, give you the good stuff. So first, this is a report I saw about Kroger. If you're not familiar with Kroger, they're behind, they're the, actually the largest grocery chain in the country. And they're behind a lot of great brands of America, like Ralph's and so forth. Other ones that are probably in your neighborhood, they have different names. But I said they right now want to honor kind of what they're saying. They're their heroes in this industry, which is the gross people on the front lines. I mean, weird enough, people at grocery stores are now on the front lines, just like healthcare workers, right? And they're giving a, a $2 temporary raise to be on the front lines or across the board for everyone. So that's really cool. That's good news. And by the way, Hopefully it becomes a permanent thing, right? It'd be nice to see these people not just get a temporary raise, but maybe you know when this all comes and settles, they'll say, no, let's, let's keep that raise in there. Another thing too um, was a new study came out that showed that the free market forces are going to be obliterating the global coal reliance that we have in, in the world. That in the next 10 years, basically running a, a, um, a um, what we call a coal plant is going to be more expensive than building oh. a renewable energy plant of so any you sort. you said coal reliance. I didn't know what you were saying. Yeah, basically coal is going to be out. It's going to get so cheap to be building through renewable energy that basically keeping old coal mines and operations where we burn coal for energy is going to be gone or not necessary anymore, and they'll be able to phase it out. So that's really cool. I mean, that's good news for the environment, good news for all of us. So what getting about, rid of all the coal and all that. What but, about North Virginia or West Virginia? People will adapt and get new jobs. That's what will happen. Time to get a new renewable energy job. How about that? Another thing that's kind of, I heard it was a cool thing or a neat little story was there's a mystery mom, they say out in the Maryland area, who's giving out free lunches. She has a table every morning. She puts out and she puts all these bag lunches out there for anyone, for kids, for workers, anyone who's maybe a little tight on money and can't afford to be spending mo mo money on lunches. Well, this mom is doing something special Aww. about it and she's putting out free food food made with love for her Aww, local community. So that's love. something kind of cool. And it's an idea if you've been uh, thinking if you have the means and you want to help find a way to bless your neighborhood. And obviously a lot of people are on walks right now. So why not put some food out there and help bless another family that maybe is not in the same place as you. So that's something that I thought that was pretty cool. One other, here's just a cool idea. It's not so much good news, but this is a cool idea. And that is, I saw a story today on this, that people are doing virtual karaoke. And you can use Zoom or you probably use other tools, but there's a link in our bio that tells you how to do it. So if you have no idea if you are challenged, technically challenged, 
go to that link in the bio and hopefully you can see uh, how to do it, set it up. I don't, it didn't look very difficult. I mean, I know how to do it, but for someone who's not used Zoom or maybe Skype or other tools, this will tell you, or Discord if you're a gamer, and this will tell you how to do it. It's kind of cool and just a fun activity to get some friends. If you like seeing, I'm not one of those people, so I don't think we'll I'm be not doing one of those. But I did see an article about disc dancing. What's that? Like distance dancing. Oh, distance dancing. I yeah. thought disc like no, throwing no, a no, frisbee no, no, around no, no, no. or something. It's like group things. So like you could do the Zoom thing, but dancing. Oh, cool. So you're listening to your own music, but you're like. You know, yeah. doing it with the doing it with a group, distance. Kind of like we had like at the distance. end of our podcast. We had our music mm -hmm. playing and yeah. all that. No one's dancing, Nobody's but dancing. But but anyhow, so that's uh, a couple of things. So a couple of good bits of good news. Uh, let's see. Next, oh, one more bit of good news, and then we'll get into all the business stuff that's going to help you guys keep your business going. Can we do and craft first. No, we're going to do this because I don't have enough time. Craft is last. If you want to know about the crafts, I'm sorry. I have to wear this the whole time. Are you are you going to be okay with that? That's oh, all right. It's tough, I know, but we but have I a do lot it for you. I know, I do it for you. And also, everyone wants to wait for the craft. No one, okay. you know, most people are like, craft is more fun than business, but this business stuff is so important in helping you basically figure out how to keep yourself flow. By the way, a lot of stuff we've talked about in past podcasts or these last few episodes are have has been included. So this is all going to be new information, but we're going to just really in a nice, succinct way, hopefully we're going to have all, all of it in one episode so that for those of you, you can point people in this direction and when they are going, oh man, I'm not sure that you go listen to this episode, I promise you, it's going to lay out all your options and point you in the direction where you need to go. Last year, do you ask every time if you do? <laughs> Tuss likes to ask if she can do right, the craft and okay. skip the line. She doesn't want to wait. She's so excited to talk about this. So, anyhow, if you haven't noticed, um, last con, the audio from 2019 is available for free. And we basically made it free for everyone. We realized you all have a lot of time right now in your hands and you need something to do. Well, why not go to LashCon? Go flashback. For those of you who've been there, this is a great time for you to go back in time. And for those of you who didn't make it, this is a time for you to experience it for the first time and get to hear 24 talks from LashCon. It's not all of them. We missed a few, unfortunately, because of technical difficulties. But this stuff is gold. It's, it's gold. all going to help you with your business. It's going to make it much better. We've already had over 200 people download the audio. It's amazing. And make sure you guys know it's free. So what you do is when you go online, you need to use the code free talks in the discount. Make sure you do that. I had a few people pay full price oh, and then they emailed me and said, <laughs> said, please give my money back. I'm so sorry. I thought they were being kind and give us a donation, which we would love to do. Oh, but no, nice. it's not the time to be asking to sell stuff. Uh, this is the time to be giving away stuff and helping people out. Because we're all in this together. We're all broke and we're all wondering how we're going to get by for the next month or two or even longer. So this is hopefully a nice little gift that will give you some good inspiration, some good information and all that. A few things here. I haven't listened to it yet, but I got it. Oh, good. And you, know, and you don't have to listen all at once. I mean, why don't I just do one a day? You mean, most likely, guys, April's been canceled. So if you listen one a day, that'll get you through at least 24 days out of the month. So that's pretty cool. And uh, it's going to be something that we hope will help inspire you and get you ready because there's a lot of to-do things in that. If you're looking for things to do to improve your business, if you listen to all those talks, you'll have pages of notes of things you can do to change and grow your business when this is all over. So it's going to be highly applicable. That's one of the things we made sure that people knew that when they came and spoke, I said, you have to give us things that they can do. I don't want just woo-woo and fluff and just inspirational talk that, you know, you, at the end you're like, yay, go take over the mountain. But I don't know how to take over the mountain, right? I need to know how to do it. So we made sure our people did very important stuff. My, my May is mostly canceled too. Yeah, I, right now I'd be planning for May to be mostly canceled. I think in California, the earliest they're saying we'll be back is mid-May. Uh, and that could drag out to June possibly if, you know, obviously the virus continues to spread. So we're doing everything we can to support you guys. This free thing is out there for you. And it will be here um, indefinitely for the rest of this year as far as I know. Uh, but I will say this, this is a side note. If you decide to buy the full thing and you can afford it, I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't be against that. That would be a nice little thank you gift that you could give to us. But if not, it's not expected by There's any no means. Out of the 200 people, basically no one's paid for it. And that's fine. We're glad. We love to see a thousand people get this because I know it's going to help everyone and help us all get back up and going when this is all over. Okay, let's get into the main meat. And that is... A lot of you, there's right now probably two groups of people. There are people who are basically had prepared themselves for this change. Like they put together three to six months of savings that was specifically made to get them through this difficult time. Either you live in an area where you know there's hurricanes or earthquakes or 
I don't know, it's about to say avalanches, but I don't think there's a <laughs> avalanche lane. But whatever it is, you knew that it's always smart to have a big savings nest egg that would help you get through a difficult time. Probably none of us prepared or thought this would happen where we'd be closed down by a virus. That's probably the part that's completely surprising everyone. But at the same time, we all, though, knew, a lot of people knew and prepared and had that. But then there's another camp. And by the way, those of you who did prepare, good for you. You guys are awesome. You guys prepared. And you guys are going to reap a lot of benefits from this. Right now, you're probably not stressing about how to pay your rent. You're probably not stressing about anything. In fact, right now is kind of a good time to maybe sleep a little bit, relax a little bit, maybe take some classes, pay for some online courses, all that stuff. It's a good time for you, but a lot of us out there are not like that, did not have that same big nest egg, or maybe you had a small nest egg, and you know in a month or two it's going to be gone, and you begin to panic, like, what's going to happen if this drags out? What if we shut down now, and when they do, there's another shutdown in the fall for some reason because the virus comes back, and their only way to fight it is through shutdowns. I get a lot of you might be scared and wondering, like, what am I going to do? For, first, there's a few, there are a bunch of options, and I'm going to share a few of them, and I just want to discourage you, from, or at least think these through before they do, because sometimes when things get tight, we start making bad decisions, because we're making them out of our heart, of emotional, fear. out of fear, right? So the first one is a lot of you are going to be tempted to go into debt, and while I'm going to talk about some options where debt is part of the, I guess, part of what's on the menu, debt should always be the last, last option. Everything else has to be exhausted to the to the to the most extent biggest extent you can do not go into debt that is going to be can be the end of your company because even though you might get money right now at some point some debt is going to have to be paid back now there's some programs that are in place where the debt will not be it'll be forgiven but if you take too much debt and then you have to start paying it back and let's say business does slow down and all of a sudden you're not quite as busy and your costs have gone up it's going to be difficult so we want to really make sure I'm not encouraging people to go into debt. I'm just going to give you lots of options. Some of them do include debt. And I want to encourage that you don't do those unless you absolutely have to. And that you can afford to do it. Because that means maybe you take some debt now, but your costs are so low in the future that you can still absorb the debt and pay it off. The problem with debt is that it's just bondage. Yes. You know, once you get past the uh, the relief of having the, the cash, you're not free to do anything else it's just bondage it is it totally is bondage um and we've been there guys we know that we've been in that pain we know that that the whole lifestyle it's horrible uh, another option that some of you will be thinking or tempted to do if you don't have money is, well i need to everyone's saying take training take training so i'll go pay for training guys if you don't have money you shouldn't be paying for anything you need to be staying really tight with your funds Yes, go get some free training if it's out there, like LashCon, right? We're offering that for free. And there are other companies that are doing it. Strategies has six courses that they put online that are for free. And the link is in our bio for that too. So there are people that are going out of their way to give away resources. But if someone's out there saying, pay me 2000 bucks or 500 bucks, and you don't have the money, you don't know where your next paycheck is going to come, this is not the time, even though you're feeling that pressure. Like everyone's saying, I need to go and work on myself and build work on my business, not just in my business. I get it. But the problem is guys, you don't have any money. So why are you spending money you don't have? You need to save that conserve it, find other methods. I promise you there's enough content in LashCon to keep you busy for days. Next, you need also to also realize that you my some of you might be told you need to start a new business. And just so you know, starting a new business right now may sound really cool. Like, I know I'm going to do my online uh, online business. But if that was never in your game plan, if that wasn't your long-term strategy, it, that's not probably a good idea. In fact, you're going to start taking on something that you might even hate. And by the way, starting an online business isn't something you do in a day or two. It's not like, oh, I'm going to start my online business and in three weeks I'll be making $10,000 a month. It's going to take time. You have to build an audience. You have to have build the tools. You have to learn how to do it. And you have to actually give something of value, right? So... That's not something, well, maybe some of you out there are already been thinking that, and that's great. Uh, we were in that camp. We already were working on an online business. So this is just kind of sped up that process where we'll have that going in the coming months. But for some of you who are thinking, well, I just want to do lashes, and I'm a mom, and I have my kids, I'm going to be home for them. And then I, I thought about be doing training someday, but online businesses now all of a sudden will be all the rage, and a lot of people are going to be selling how to do online businesses, and that's fine. If you're prepped for that and ready for it, go for it. But at the same time, I want you to feel pressured to do something that you didn't want to do and find yourself in a mess like in three months where you are in the middle of this online business, and all of a sudden you can go back to work, and you're now split between two businesses. How are you going to do your regular business if you're so busy with the online? It's going to be difficult to juggle. So just something to think about. Um, my next thing was do nothing in this time that you think will be over time. What was my thought? <laughs> I lost my train of thought. 
Okay, I'm going to skip that one because that's not that important. So focus. focus, moving on. So anyhow, what do you need to do right now to save your business? Let's get into the real important stuff. And I have basically five points here, or really four main points of what you can do to save your business. And these four points are going to really, some of them are obvious and hopefully a couple of them you've already done. And then we'll get into the real big one, which is really where is the money that you can get into your company right now to save it. First one is if you haven't done this, you need to make your budget right now. First and foremost, make a budget for now and then make a budget for when you're going to reopen. Because obviously, if you're going to take on some of these things we're going to talk about, you're going to be paying some things back. And if you have to pay them back, you have to include that in your budget. So you need to know what you need to be making when you get going so you can have some targets, some goals. And also maybe you'll realize, hey, if I take on this loan, I won't. Maybe they'll bring back this one thing. Like maybe you have music in your salon you're paying for and that costs you 30 bucks a month or something like we did. And then all of a sudden you realize, well, I can't afford that though. When I come back, I need to cut that 30 bucks because I have a hundred dollar loan payment I'm going to need to make. So you need to find ways to trade off and cut your costs so you don't go, you know, once you get back, you're not you know, going to be killed by it. So make a budget for both now and also prepare to make a budget for one or two months from now when you go back online and start working again. Next thing, I want to show you this because this is actually really, really helpful for us and we've saved some money doing this. And that's adjusting your bills. A lot of people probably are already doing this and it's an obvious thing, but maybe some of you are a little discouraged or thinking, oh, I don't really want to, you know, do this. And I don't, I'm okay. Maybe I'll, I don't know. I'm embarrassed. You know, yeah, it's embarrassing to call people and say, look, I need to find ways to cut my costs. I need to save some money. And that's not fun. That's not, that's a little, it takes a little humility and can be kind of embarrassing to, to admit, like, I really don't have the funds to pay, but you know what? There's some things that you should just cut your costs anyways. Even if you have money, why pay for things that you don't need right now? Cause we don't know how long this is going to be. So first off, one of the things that we did is we talked to AT&T about our internet and right now we haven't got a final word from them, but they are believing, they believe that in our building for the month of April, they're going to waive the fee for that month since we're not there. And so while that's not final, you can't quote me on that. Call your local provider. If you have an internet, your phone in your business, you might be able to get at least one month wave where you're not paying for it. And who knows if this drags out longer, maybe you'll get two months. Who, we, we're all in this together. And one of the things I've realized when I've been talking to people we pay bills to or lenders, not lenders, really, but people we pay bills to like rent. So everyone realizes that we're in this together and they're all trying to find ways to help out in some way. So that was pretty cool. Booker, by the way, the company that where we get our software company, they just said, no, nope. yeah, scheduling. A lot of you guys may use Booker, may use my, um, Val my, body, my body or uh, Valagra. Val ah. Vagero. Vagero, yes. And also, I can't think Millennium. of any of them. Millennium. A lot of these companies are trying to help. And Booker went ahead and waived our fees for April. Said, nope, no fees for April. So if you guys have one of these companies, call them. Just say, hey, right now, I'm not making any money. Can I waive the fee for this one month? You may be surprised. Yes, Foxy Fit or... I said, um, all we can do is ask. Asking is free. That's one of my favorite things to say. Yeah, one of our favorite free. free phrases. Um, our landlord, we basically paid last month, but we told him this month, we don't know how much we can pay for our bill, our, our office. We're paying for our home, but for our office, we said, we don't know. And they said, well, pay what you can. That was their answer. Pay what you can. And I'm sure as we go get through this and they find out what financial help they get and what we get, I told them once we know more about the loans and all the different options for us, we will do our best to get back up to speed. But hopefully, if they get help too, maybe they'll be able to pass on that savings to you. So that was definitely call your landlord if you haven't already. Auto insurance. We saved about $2,000 on our auto insurance. Sounds like a Geico ad. Um, but basically, we bas I called them and said, what can I do to save money? I said, well, if you reduce your mileage in your car, since none of us are driving, right? We Husney goes every couple of days to the grocery store and that's it. So we cut our miles down to barely nothing. And we saved $2,000 a year right now on our payments. $2,000. That's a lot of money. Now it'll go back up as soon as we basically start driving again and I'll call them back and move our mileage back up to normal. But right now our payment for, which was coming due in a few days was reduced by $250 for our next payment. So that was a big one. And that's something you can all do right now. If you're planning to drive, if you have to stay home, call your ins um, insurance company to see if you can reduce the mileage on your insurance and you can save some money that way. Gas and electric bills are offering assistance. If you call them our health ins insurance, we pay a lot for our health insurance. They're offering assistance. I don't think we're unqualified, but we're still going to ask, like Tess said, asking us free. If you have credit card companies, call them and see what they can do to give relief. Um, the FDIC on their website says the creditors will most likely work with you on a solution. That's important to contact, 
contact them as soon as possible and explain your situation. So the FIDIC is even recommending that the federal government saying, look, guys, if you have problems, talk to them ASAP and get that fixed. Um, also, you can consider doing balance transfers. I know this is a dumb game that if you're in debt, it's, it gets people in a lot of traps. But right now, kind of have to think of all options that have fallen on the table. And combining credit cards and one other credit card where you have no payments maybe for a few months could be something that helps you or it reduces your interest rate or whatever. So that's another thing. And last, talking to banks and asking them to waive fees and possibly help you out with mortgages, mortgage payments and all that. That's another option. So, all right, let's get into the big one, financial assistance. There's a whole bunch of these guys. And again, real quickly, I want to reemphasize this um, about debt. Dave Ramsey, who I'm a big fan of, actually talked about this. And he right now is not recommending anyone take any of the loans from the government because he questions, even though some of them are forgivable loans, he still says he questions questions so whether or not they, the government. he doesn't trust them like yes okay you're saying forgivable but when it comes to being forgivable when the you know rubber hits the road will it really pan out that way they're like i think we need that money so you're on the hook for it yeah like something could happen or maybe it just takes longer like they make you pay for it for a while before they finally forgive it whatever it is it, it could be difficult especially if you are on a tight budget and all of a sudden you have to owe money that you didn't plan on it can really be the end of your business like in six months instead of being now like oh great so i got all business in six months from now so he highly recommends not to but that said doesn't mean you shouldn't consider it and you also might be in a place where you literally have no other options and we are trying to make sure you know what your options so the first one unemployment now just you know unemployment we have basically the idea is on a, you can all apply for unemployment. Normally, you have to be an employee and be filing W-2 and be paying taxes in the unemployment to get unemployment. Good news, guys. Everyone, 1099, self-employed people, um, anyone who basically is working can apply for Single unemployment. Single practitioners. Single practitioners definitely can apply for the, and that's not normal guys. That's not the way it usually works. Usually if you're a single practitioner and you're just paying your regular taxes, you don't get unemployment, but now you can. And also they're going to throw in an extra $600. Now in California, that $600 has not been put into the program yet. So we like, we filed for Tessa's unemployment this week. We got back word within two days that she was accepted. Yay! Yeah. They are quickly processing this stuff, guys. They're not doing it. I mean, at least in California, every state's going to be different. So don't take my word. That's how it's going to be in your state. But in California, where most a large percentage of unemployment is coming from, they got it through quickly. I believe they're literally just rubber stamping everything at this point. Just boom, 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 boom. Let's slide it through. They don't care. As long as the paperwork is normal, you don't mess it all up. They're, they're going to give you that funds and help out. So basically, you want to make sure, like in California, um, one of our people here says, um, keep checking uh, my state and they haven't updated yet. Yeah, each state's there in California. Right now, Tesla was not approved for the additional $600 a week on the per paycheck. But that still doesn't mean it won't come. I mean, what I've read is that's going to be added in later. So while she is approved for it, she can't, she won't get a check for a couple of weeks anyways. Um, we're hoping in the next couple of weeks as everyone's catching up to speed, that will be added into the mix and we will have those funds added. So that's huge, guys. I mean, think about it. If you get three, $400 plus $600, you'd be making $900 a week for actually right now they're saying it's four months, but they're going to extend it, I believe, for another four months, which means really, no, or thir or actually it's going to be extended for 13 weeks, I think more beyond that. Now, hopefully, guys, you get back to work in four, six, eight, nine weeks, you know, dump your unemployment. Don't be double dipping because they will get you eventually, I promise you. I've heard stories where it takes a couple of years, but eventually they'll notice you pay, you paid or you reported income and they go, wait a minute, but you also had unemployment at that time. How's that possible? And they'll ask you for a repayment on that. So you don't want to do that. And it's dishonest anyway. So take that unemployment for the few weeks. Hopefully you only need it. And then once your business gets up and going, you can just dump off unemployment and get back in it. So that's the first one. That's a huge one, guys. Get that on today. If you haven't done it, do it tonight. It doesn't take long. Maybe it took 15, 20 minutes to do the whole process very, very quick. Someone asks, do you know what works when doing your, ta when going your taxes or doing your taxes? Doing, doing. Um, how that works. Yeah, you're basically anything for unemployment is taxable. So like with us, there's an option there that says, do you want the tax? You can click on that and they'll take the money out. Or you can say, I don't want to pay taxes. I don't want to take it out because I need all the money, but I will basically take it later. Or I'll pay it later when because you will have to report. The government will give you a 1099 GOV, and then you'll take that information, put it in your income statement, and you'll pay taxes on it. When did you apply for Tusney? She applied just we just had her two days ago, and we got notice online. today online. 
So it's all online. It's like a kindergartner application. It's very easy. Very, very easy. I did mine uh, actually earlier because I knew for sure that I would have put uh, basically uh, be able qualify. to qualify because I was an employee in Terry Lash last year. And though I knew that would, but Tushney, I didn't know if she would. So we waited on that until we knew for sure. So that's unemployment. Now there's a government stimulus check coming for all of us guys. And this is really good news. The government stimulus check says it's going to be $1,200 per adult or 2400 uh, $2, for a couple plus $500 per kid. Now, if you make more than $75,000 as a single person, it changes, the, the amount goes down. And once you get up to 99,000, I believe you'll get anything. Mm. And then same thing is if you go up to 150,000, you get the full amount. And once you go from 150 to up to almost 200,000, after 199, I think 199,000, the amount goes to zero. So basically, there's an, uh, an adjusted amount once you get past a certain thresholds. And all this stuff is online, guys. I have a link online. Um, actually, not for this one, but for the SBS stuff, there's a link on our Instagram that will allow you to read up about this. So basically, everyone can apply for this. Even it says, even if you don't file for the IRS in the last two years, which those are going to be the people easy, get most easily, there is going to be a portal set up with the IRS where you can go ahead and you can put your information in. Let's just say you've never filed. Bad on you if you haven't and you've been working here. But let's say you did it. You can still get a check. And they don't care. There will be an IRS page that I do not believe it's at yet up. Everything I've seen says it's not. But that's where you will update your information. Say, here's where I live. This is my social security number. You need to have a social security number. If you don't have one, I'm sorry, that that one thing will be required. They're not just going to send checks willy-nilly to anyone who says, hey, send a check over here. You have to have a social security number. Someone wrote in here with the stimulus check, um, will we get a, a, from money? It's considered a tax credit, technically speaking. So while I do believe that you probably will still report it in your, in your income, but it's going to be considered or your taxes, it won't be an income item. It's a tax credit, credit, which means it's like free money. It really is, guys. It's This is really good news for anyone getting $1,200 or $2,400, especially if you're only out of work for maybe four weeks, it's going to be a huge, huge relief. And, you know, and if you have kids, you know, then you'll get another $500 per kid. So, hey, if you have 18 kids right now, it can be, yeah, it can be pretty good for you. Those are, you know, people with huge families right now are all thankful for that. Now, a couple other things to make sure you know that this money is going to take some time to get you. If you already have direct deposits set up because you've been doing paying taxes online, doing all that and direct deposits are in place, you'll get your check. They say sometime mid April. Unfortunately, if you've not done that, it says it can take up to five months to get you a cut check. In fact, they're going to put priority to people who are lower income and people who are on fixed incomes or on social security. They're going to get their checks first and then they'll work their way through and get more people up there. So if you don't have any, if you've never been doing your taxes online and not had direct deposits set up, you'll probably get a written check. They said about 60 million people are going to be getting a cash, a paper check, but it can take up to five months. So that's bad news. And that for those of you who don't have that, uh, someone said right here, I read somewhere that stimulus check will apply to next year taxes. Not sure what that means, though. I do not believe that's true. I do believe it's a tax credit. It is not something that is taxable. I read that from a CPA site, and I actually read it on the government site. that said this is not tax taxable income. So that's good news, and um, I think that's all. So that's number two. Number three, delay payment of the employer payroll tax. So this only applies to those of you who have employees. So if you don't have employees, this is not something you can do. But if you have employees, you know what this is. Every month or every quarter, you have to pay payroll taxes. And the one tax that they're willing to delay is the 6.2% tax on Social Security that you pay. Now, the employee puts up that money too, and that money you have to submit to the government as always. But they're saying that 6.2% that you throw in on top of that, that you can hold off on and you'll have to pay it. And that's for the rest of this year. Between now and December of this year, you do not have to pay that. You just take it out, waive it if you have to. Not a great idea to do it because, of course, like anything, when it comes due, it just may catch you by surprise. So if you can afford to pay it, pay it. Don't take these things if you can afford it. Only do it if you're in a desperate place and you just cannot make ends meet. So that 6.2%. Like for us, if I remember right, whoops, our power went out. Okay, sorry, that. We had a pause on there. So for us, uh, if I remember right, we were paying, I think, like $5,000 a month on taxes for payroll. So for us, you know, of that 6.2%, probably three or $4,000. So that would have been a lot of savings for us to put that aside and wait. 
you're going to have to pay it in two payments at the end of 2021 and at the end of 2022. So you have, basically have one to two years to pay off. Basically, it's a loan you're taking from the U.S. government by not paying those payroll taxes. So that's another big one, something to definitely look at and do if you can. Next, the SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan, or otherwise known as the EIDL. This is basically, there's a couple options. There's a loan program that you can go into, and that one's fine. You just basically, a, you can get up to $2 million of working capital. It's for small businesses under 500, independent contractors, sole proprietors. It's a 30-year loan, 3.75 interest rate, 12 months deferred. That means you don't have to wait. You don't have to pay for 12 months, guys. First 12 months, it just sits there and you wait on it and you just get through this year. And then when it does come back on, an interest rate of 3.75 is extremely low. You can get up to $200,000 without a personal guarantee, which means you also personally own it. So your company you know, takes a loan. And often if you're over 200,000, you personally would also have to guarantee it saying, I'm going to pay this loan even if uh, my company shuts down. You don't have to do that um, for if it's under 200,000. For most of us guys, I don't believe we need $200,000 loans to keep our businesses going. I hope not. Um, basically, it's approval will be based on credit score. and But no first year, um, basically, tax returns are going to be required. No collateral is required if you take a loan of $25,000 or less. So that's pretty cool, guys. No, less than $25,000, no collateral needed. Anything over $25,000, they're going to be wanting collateral. I joined a little late, but how do we apply for the stimulus? Um, good question. You don't apply for the stimulus check. The stimulus check is just going to come to you. Nothing to apply unless you are not been paying, you've not been identified by IRS, you basically don't exist to IRS. Then you can go ahead and apply for the. You will have to sign up online with the IRS. Let them know your, uh, where you live and what your social security number is, and then you can get that check. But that's going to probably be almost no one. You okay? The next thing we'll talk about that is the 10K. We'll get to that in a second. This loan you apply for through the SBA. This is the big loan. So this is going to take some time too. It's supposed to be a quick turnaround, um, but that still said, um, you will need some time for this. It's a lot, a little bit more work, a little bit more um, proof we need to put put in, but. The good news, guys, is what Christine just mentioned from her, from Island Lash is that there is also a $10,000 grant available to everyone. Now, this is crazy, guys. This is really good. This is for small businesses, under 500, independent contractors, sole proprietors. Again, you get $10,000 and you can receive funds within three days of your application. It is quick money, guys. Very, very quick money. Three days application is insane. So you can get that. This is a grant. By the way, it's not a loan. And I don't know if you're familiar between the difference between grants and loans, but grants are forgiven. Loans, you have to pay back. All right. But grants, they just forgive you the loan. Pretty cool. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Now, the funds for this are not endless and they will run out. So the important thing is to go apply for this ASAP. By the way, this loan will take you five minutes. That's how fast it is. The link is in the bio. Go to the SBA page, then go to the 10,000 grant link and click on that and you can have it done tonight. It'll take you 10, 15 minutes. It is so quick. I applied three, four days and I've not gotten it. Well, that's the ideal, it's three days. Well, there I'm was an article that said uh, actually today that they, the banks were not quite ready Yeah, it's different. For it. That's oh, the other okay. SBA thing. The banks are overwhelmed. I'm gonna bet the SBA is overwhelmed too. So let's just say it's gonna take longer than three days. That was the ideal world, three days. I'm gonna bet, yeah, give it a week or two, maybe, who knows? There, everyone in the planet right now is breaking the internet, just hammering, applying for stuff. So things may take longer, but that's what you're saying. It, things may take longer, but that's okay. Just, yeah, like I said, patience and give it some time. This is um, basically, it's too good to be true almost. I mean, $10,000 for given grant, pretty, pretty cool. Um, you basically says, um, if you're going to apply for what we'll be talking about in a second, the Paycheck Protection Program, you have to be careful about applying for both because you can't use them both for payroll. Only one can be used for payroll. So you use, if you get the Payroll Protection Program, you're going to use that for payroll. And this thing you're going to use have to use for other things in your business. You can't double dip. Otherwise, what they'll do is, by the way, you, if you already have a loan already set up or you already have a relationship with your bank and you get loans like this, they may roll this 10000 grant into that loan and they'll just forgive it. And all this stuff is really where you need to talk to the SBA and talk to your banker to get more details. I'm more trying to give you guys information where to go and what's out there than give you the nuts and bolts how it all works out in great details because that would take hours for me to do probably and that's not what this is for. This is more to give you hope and realize there's a lot of things out there to help you with your businesses 
that you don't have to throw in the towel right now. You don't have to get as quick because there's no way to get by. There are resources and some of them like this emergency grant is free. $10,000 grant. Lashes by Melly asked, how does that work? The grant work for when you file? Basically go to the SVA page. The link is in our bio. Just go there and you'll see the page and you basically click on that 10,000 grant, take you to a thing where you click on the form, you fill it out and you submit it. And that's it. It takes literally maybe five minutes to fill it out. It's really, really simple. I'm going to have you just read the questions if there's anything. Otherwise uh, I'll just keep going. Yeah. Cool. And that way People I'll not get distracted. Here, Molly and Jasmine. Yeah. And if you guys miss a lot, don't worry. This is going to be on our podcast. You can list it there or you can watch this live cast. It'll be on here for 24 hours or you can go to YouTube. We'll have this on our YouTube page. We're also live streaming on YouTube now. So lots of places for you to go back and watch this and take notes. And by the way, again, I really want to emphasize, this is not the end all, know all of everything. There's this information. We're not lawyers. We're not CPAs. Updated info for you. Just giving you options, giving you info so that you right, will know there's options for you to go. And then you go talk to your CPA. Then you go talk to a lawyer. You go talk to your banker and see what they can do. The, so first off, this grant, this stuff is not with bankers, so you will not call a bank about anything with the SBA um, IEDL or Economic Injury Disaster Loan. This is purely between you and um, basically working with the SBA, and the $10,000 grant is really, really easy. So um, someone wrote in here, is it okay to apply twice? I don't remember if they checked the box for the $10,000 advance option. I don't know on that question. I mean, I know. When I it, would. I don't know. I, I think mean, sometimes when you muddle up the works, things get slow, slowed down because there's um, can be difficulties. Someone asked, can I get unemployment as an owner of a company? I paid myself on the owner's draw. Yes, you can right now. You can get unemployment even if you were taken as an owner's draw. So good news, guys, um, for everyone. They're trying to get money to in our hands to help out. So that's that. Let's move on to a couple does. more things. SBA Express Loan. Basically, it was an SBA Express Loan, Small Business Association Express Loan Program. This is basically, if you already have a relationship with the SBA, and this is all for the United States, guys. I realize someone here is talking about From Canada. Canada. It's not. This is not all for everyone. This is just for the United States only. So sorry for all those of you in Canada or in England. But thanks England. for the support. Yeah, but you should look for your programs. I mean, I guarantee you just type in financial aid, COVID-19, coronavirus in your country, and I bet you guys you're going to start seeing all sorts of stuff popping up in your country. Um, so next, this next program is only if you have a relationship with your lender already. And basically you can call your lender and be able to fast track you $25,000. So if you already have a loan, you've been paying it, you can call your local banker because all the, most of these loans usually go through a local banker, not actually the SBA themselves. And they can hopefully get you make a quick $25,000, but you already have to have that relationship. You can't just go in and, and say, I want to open up a loan and all that. That's, that takes time. So there's these other programs that are a lot quicker. Another person said, I heard from the president of a bank to apply yourself as an employee on a paycheck protection loan. Yeah, I haven't gotten into that yet, but we will talk about that in a second. All right, so that's SBA Express Loan. Now let's talk about the PPP or the Payroll Protection Program. Basically, starting today, you maybe heard stories. The banks are trying to figure out how to get over this. I think B of A had over 10,000 people apply in the first few hours and overwhelmed the system and broke it. And there are other banks that haven't got this stuff up yet. Not everyone is ready. In fact, the government promised that it would be ready the same day and in hours. And they, they were complaining that they hadn't even had time to implement, you know, what was required. That's our pig making noises in the background, <laughs> making the monster noises monster in the background. Sounds. That's not me snoring while Tessa's talking. But anyhow, guys, April 3rd, they said today companies can start applying. April 10th is when independent contractors can apply. I, I, I saw that on one page. I can't remember which one I saw. I've read so many pages, so I can't verify if that was a government page or if that was a tax uh, consulting company or, or a CPA company or something like that. I've been reading a lot of stuff. But from what I understand right now, they're trying to spread it out a little bit. So if you have employees and staff, you can apply for the payroll protection program currently right now. And it has to, you know, technically speaking, you can do it with anyone. Banks are going to get preferential treatment to people they know. So if you are working a bank or work with a bank and you have a business there, you do your checking there, or you have a loan there for your a mortgage or something, they're going to be much more quick to work with you because they know you and they understand you and they're willing to work with you. If they have no clue who you are, you're going to go to the end of the line. From what, that's what, what I understand, the way banks have to prioritize these things. So go to the bank that you have a relationship with. Don't go somewhere where you don't know one. Or worse, I don't think it's probably advised that you go to 10 banks and apply to all of them because that's going to mess up things because you can't get loans from everyone. OK, this is meant to be help you with one bank, with one payroll protection loan, not have 18 of them. I think they will consider that fraud. Probably I don't want to say for sure, but I'm sure there's going to be some problems with that. Um, 
So let's get back into this. So from, let's see, just because you're, yeah, we're moving on. Things you need to prepare. It's pretty easy, guys. You just need to know what your average payroll was in 2019. It's going to be two and a half times what your net average payroll is. So two and a half months. Figure what that is. You're going to put that number in there. The form, I've seen it super basic again. Won't take any time to fill out. And then you submit it. And basically, you can, you know, there are some things, qualifiers. Like they said, the interest rate will be 1%, no payments for the first six months. And it's a two-year term. But guys, this is a forgivable loan. So the idea is if you use 75% of this loan to use for payroll, they want people not to lay everyone off. Or if you did lay off everyone, you'll bring everyone back on and you'll start paying them again. And you can use 75% of this loan has to be used for payroll and it's, it will be forgivable. And it's not through the SBA. I want to make note that do not call the SBA or try to reach out to them to get this loan. This is only through a local bank. And when you are done and when this gets all worked out down the road after those six months, then you can tell them, hey, I used it for payroll. You have to prove that, show that. And then the idea is they're going to forgive you the full amount of the loan. Again, another loan that they say that will be fully forgiven if you use it appropriately. Now, if there's discrepancies and you don't do that, then they'll roll that loan into a four-year loan at a 4% interest rate and you'll have 10 years to pay it off. So, yeah. So a golden native beauty uh, wrote us that, um, is it LIC, USC? I can't see. Verizon is doing a grant. Super easy to be to apply. Oh, yeah. LI. Yeah, there's USC. other co companies out there offering grants. Um, Facebook is offering a grant. I think that one might have been already done. They had like 33,000 openings and you have to be near Facebook to do it. I was going to talk about that, but that's another option. So there are other places. Yeah, so um, Valerie, this is the one that Dave does not recommend doing right. Actually, I, Dave, I got a feeling he didn't want to do any of them. Any, he doesn't, any, uh, any of these things, even though they say they're all repayable. Uncle Dave does or, not like that. He doesn't forget. He doesn't believe the government really means that. I, I'm only offering these as options for you guys, and you can decide what you need to do. I, I think if you have no money in the bank right now, your options are less, and you're in a bad place, and you may have to do some things that may be difficult. But like I said earlier, you have to create this budget. You have to have a budget. So even when you come out of this, and let's say you do have to pay back some of that loan, then you should be ready to pay back that loan and have that in your budget. Just plan on it. Just figure it all out. Talk to the banker, figure out how much you're applying for and all that, except, except for the grant. For the grant. That's yeah. Right. Um, from everything I've gotten from the grant, the 10,000 emergency disaster loan, uh, that's EIDL, that's $10,000. It's a grant by essence. It's not a loan. So that is forgivable. And that's what grants are. They're forgivable and they, you don't have to pay them back. But the PPP, yeah, that one is going to be more questionable because there's going to be, I'm sure, arguments or did you really use it for what you said you did? And there's going to be discrepancies and it may be delays and you may they may have pay, charging you and making you pay money on stuff that you don't want to. But if you can afford it, let's just say you do know you're going to make enough money down the road and you, you can risk that. It's not too risky. I do believe eventually it will be forgivable in one way or another. And uh, well, we'll just have to differ on that one with Dave. Dave, I think it's, um, but it's wise. Don't take it unless you abs absolutely have no options. Um, Golden Native Beauty joke. She says she tried to tell her husband that she, that Dave doesn't think she should care about credit score. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Actually, Dave, with the credit score, if you don't have loans and you don't take money. Who cares what credit score is? You don't need it, right? Lashner but said Amazon. She heard that is uh, Amazon's offering a grant for businesses wa within walking distances of their offices. Yeah, Facebook is doing a similar thing. They're offering a, a grant. Um, people who are eligible. Basically, people have been and have yeah. two to fifty employees, been in business for four years, have been closed down because of COVID, and are near a location of a Facebook a company that's near a Facebook office. So like Southern California, Bay Area, different parts of the world where they have offices. So there are a bunch of these companies, and you should just be looking for companies that are offering small things like this to help you out. Another one, and that's all it, that's all the government stuff, guys. Another way to go to is go to your bank, by the way, talk to them. They might have options. They may have products they can offer you. Since you may have a relationship with them, you already been, maybe you have a mortgage with them or something else. Why don't you talk to your bank? Ask them if there's anything they can do to help you get through this time. They may already have options for you. They may waive your, maybe you can get your loan delayed for, or your mortgage delayed for two months. You know, there's options like that. They have done. We did that with the car payments years ago. We couldn't pay our car payment and we had delayed for two months, guys. We had them waive. We still had to pay eventually, but they just said for two months, you don't have to do it. Um, and people keep throwing stuff out. Thank you, Valerie. Actually, that's another one. I'll just jump to it since she brought it up. The PBA has a $500, um, basically a little grant. It's $500 free money that they're giving away. Um, the only thing about this it is a lottery, so it's not very some merit. They're just going to take everyone's names in the pot. Asking and, is free. And basically, you can basically go ahead and get that money 
Possibly. They'll just draw your hand, name out a hat, and if you get it, you'll get 500 bucks. By the way, if you do have money, though, and you can help out, I put on our link in our bio where you can donate money and help other people out. So let's just say you're doing really well. It's been a good season for you. Hey, why don't you donate some money and help other businesses out and maybe increase the amount of companies that can get that 500 bucks? Because 500 bucks for a single practitioner might be all you need to get through this. PBA is Professional Beauty Association. And they are basically a are, are really they are are you know you've we've they seen they lobby for us they lobby for us There's they lobby a, for the things that we care about all beauty professionals hairstylists nails lashes estheticians you probably have seen um, we've had some ones like Nala for the Lash World but they're not really that big yet and they are not able to lobby and do big things PBA is huge guys PBA you can get insurance from you can get health insurance from you yep. can get individual. Um, and liability insurance, liability. all sorts of stuff. Yeah. It's a great tool. If you haven't ever looked at it, go to the pba.org or probeauty.org, sorry, and look them up and you will see all sorts of cool resources and things to be part of. And that's something you should look at right away too, because there's options there. And by the way, there's a link in their bio because they've actually put a link in their page that has tons of resources and places for help and such, much like what we've been trying to do for you guys. Um, one, two more things on where to get money. And I've said this one earlier, but I want to say it again because I think it's, it's it's really useful. It's a little dangerous, like all these things, right? But it can be actually a great way to um, save or to get some money in right away if you need it. And it's a, it's a loan, but you're going to take a loan from your clients. I don't advise doing uh, gift cards. Gift cards, you you but sell fifty bucks, hundred bucks, and let's say you sell to you know fifty clients, and that means next month they all redeem those gift cards, and you make no money. So you'll be right where you are right now with no money, and wondering where your next one. And then you'll be tempted to sell more gift cards, and you'll just keep doing this circle around the world, and it'll kill your business slowly. But there is an option that I'll call selling a series up front. Now, a series is a package of appointments where you sell 10, 20, whatever appointments all in one, and you give a small discount, like 5, 10%. And let's just say a fill for you is 100 bucks right now. And it's normal. So it normally be $1,200. So you give them, let's say, 10% off. So now they only have to pay 1080 Now, if you maybe just take three, four clients like that and say, look, I'm going to take my top clients, the ones I know that have money, they walk in with their Gucci bags, that they're fine. This is not going to hurt them. You know, they're going to be okay. You go to those three or four clients and say, you know what? I'm going to offer you a deal. I'd love to sell you up front 12 appointments for $1,080. You're going to save, you know, about 10% off the bill. And for you know, next 12 appointments, you will not actually, it's basically one free appointment is what they're getting. You're going to be able to come in and that'll be free. And basically, um, they're going to like it because they're going to save some money and it's going to help you get a loan up front. But you don't want to do a lot of it because if you have like 50 clients and you get 50 of these, all of a sudden you have no money again. But if you take three or four of them, like, ah, you know what, maybe you can save money and not, you know, for, you know, next, you know, three, six months, let's say, and have three or four clients come in for free and they pay up front. You get $4,000 or $5,000 up front right now just to help you get through this hard time. So that's one you have to manage carefully. I would not offer it to all your clients. I'd offer it to three clients, see if they take it. If they don't offer it to one more until you get your three or four, get your three or four thousand dollars in the bank. Hopefully that's all you need to get you through this hard time. And on top of the grant that maybe you get through the other company and that you're going to be okay. So then Tess says, bring the pig, bring the pig in here. Um, and then the last one, if you haven't already thought of it, probably all of you have, there's a family taking money from family is always dangerous, right? Because I've, I've known families that have been destroyed by that um, because they didn't pay back money and all that. Don't highly recommend it, but it's another option if you haven't thought about it. Definitely one to put on the radar. Lastly, and then we're almost done here and then we're gonna get to Tesla's craft because she can't wait. I really think during this time, the fourth thing you'd be doing is working on your marketing plan. This time you have time, you need to learn marketing. I know a lot of people are selling marketing. Like I said, if you can't afford it, do not spend the money on marketing or on classes and all that. I'm going to give you one thing to spend money on. It's super cheap and you can, it'll be more than worth. It's what you pay for it. And that's this book called marketing made simple. The ebook is $13. The hardcover is $23. It's made by a company called um, story brand. They also have uh, story brands. Amazing guys. They're really one of the best things I've, I've known about them for years, but they've upped their game over the last year and gone from being a good company to an absolutely amazing company. And this book, I'm, par I'm about halfway through it. It's um, just, just so awesome. It basically gives you really two tools. It's going to help you really know how to build a website and one that really will help you sell your company. 
And it's also going to tell you about e email campaigns and how to build emails that help you to get people to um, basically build a funnel. So you're going to build a good website with a PDF that makes a little offer. And then you're going to build some emails and you're going to learn how to do all that. And it's going to give you the language and how to do it. It's huge, guys. This stuff is so um, basically um, worth it. And I think you should definitely check it out. They are a big company that we highly recommend. And that's the one thing you should be saying. I know a lot. What, by the way, guys, branding, I see some branding stuff out there. Well, branding's cool. And branding is important. Marketing is the most important thing you need to do. Yes, having some pretty colors, a pretty look through your website is okay. But that's like painting your house and having to be empty. Oh, wow, I have a pretty house with lots of cool colors and shadings. But in the inside, it's an empty house with no bed, no chairs, nothing. It's just an empty space with no function, no purpose. The electric power isn't turned on or electric's not turned on, the gas is out and the water is dead. So you don't want to do that. Really, what makes your, your marketing work is what's in the house. And your house is making sure you have those systems in place so that you have a good message, you have good tools to reach people and get them involved. I can tell you for us with our last con, well, I will say we definitely do not have the prettiest of aesthetics by any means. We were able to get almost 300 people to our conference because we had the best messaging out there. We told people what they needed to hear, what they wanted to hear so that they would come to our conference. So be careful of just thinking all you need is a pretty logo and some pretty colors and spending money on that. That's going to you're wasting your time. You really need right now to learn marketing and learn how to do good messaging so that you can communicate your, with people and get your ideal audience or ideal client into your salon. And that is going to be the best thing you can do with your business right now while you're slow. Get that going. Get that ready. That's my. We'll probably dive into that deeper at another time. Book recommendation, like I said, get the book Marketing Made Simple by basically this company. As like I said, is um, not, they have a actually one more thing. They have a little video called Business Made Simple Daily. You can sign up for it when you go to their story brand website. Get that every day. It's probably the best thing I've seen on business every day, giving you tips on how to grow your business, how to improve your marketing. Huge stuff. Okay. And I think that is everything I have to say. I'm looking here about that and Tuss wants to do her craft. All right. Okay. So I'm going to just talk about this little COVID scarf thingy. Now this was actually one of my crafts on the other days is, is, is that I knitted this and um, basically it's just a little tube, but it starts out as a scarf, just a long piece. And all I did was I sewed the edges together. It's so that it's, it's just, one continuous loop. So the seam right there. Okay. So, I think Terrace might like it too. If you want, he calls me a Terrace. Okay. Yeah, Tess is a Terrace. If you want to make one of these, all you have to do is just takes one skein of yarn, which is five ounces. And this is just acrylics. And I use a number seven knitting needles. You can actually get these at Daiso if you have a Daiso. And Daiso is still open right now. And um, they are an essential service. So you just sew it together. You can just wear it like like just a little neck thing but it, it's stiff enough that it'll hold so i just put a clip in my hair and i walked to the store like this and it, and it was fine right so if you want to make one you can knit it i'm just going to show you how to start it's super easy to start knitting and all of you listening i'm because you're doing lashes i know that you would probably enjoy this because it's something fine motor skills that you're doing with your hand it's so easy to start your 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 um your first stitch basically you make a circle like this right you just make a circle we would this won't be on the podcast part and you push <laughs> pull that through that's your first stitch okay? there you go that's that's, that's your news show you how easy this is you guys you put your needles through this and you can go on a, a another website and sh they'll show you how to do this but i just want to show you how easy it is to cast on you just put the put the thread oops so easy Put the thread, put two of the needles through that little loop there, put one in between, and then you just do that. Uh, you should probably if watch a YouTube I video. I know, you should probably just watch a YouTube video, but you just cast on it, and you cast on 64, 65 stitches, and you just knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl until your scarf is finished, and then you sew it together. And now, now you have your, by the way, as you guys have heard, they're now recommending everyone make their own scarves and their own masks. Okay, now let's say you don't have time to knit. What you can do is raid your closet for a shirt that you don't need anymore, like something like this, right? And all you're going to do, so this is what I did, is I took, a, I took, I was actually a little dress, right? And it was just like this, and I just cut the top off it. I cut the shirt part off of it, right? 
So it's just be essentially a tube. Now, in order you to do this, top on your face. you need a pair of scissors, an old garment like a dress or a tube, and two safety pins. Where's my safety pins? So just regular safety pins that look like this, right? Okay, three so, minutes before we lose right. this pot. Cut, <laughs> cut the thing, right? And then you put the pins. Hold on. All right, this is... You put the pins in a little loop. So you put your ear through it. It holds your ear. And I know, I know. All Sorry. right. Almost Sorry. Okay. three minutes. So you've got your little ear hooks like this. You could put this up. Well, you got. You just have to trust me. All right. Is there a YouTube video? You think? Or is this? This you I just whipped up together. Uh, like you can't <laughs> tell, right? But you can use a, an an old skirt, a scarf, and some safety pins to hook on your ears. And I can't really do that right now. Have fun. Awesome, guys. So that's your thing. Last thing I'm going to leave you is a movie recommendation because I think we all need an uplifting positive movie right now with all the creations going on. I'm sure all of you have finished The Tiger King and need something new to do. And I'm going to give you something that's a little bit more uplifting and positive. This film's called You, uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor? And it's a film with Tom Hanks. And it basically Tom Hanks is Mr. Rogers. It doesn't get any cuter than that. By the way, it was a film that I wasn't very excited to see. I, I, I thought, well, oh, who cares? It's going to be so sappy. Mr. Rogers. And it turned out, guys, it's an amazing. Even the director at first did not want to make this film. She even said, I don't want this film. It's going to be lame. Then she read the script and went, holy crap, that's an amazing script. So she went ahead and made it. It kind of got overlooked by the Oscars, but it was it's a great film. And it's something that I think you guys will find extremely positive, uplifting during this kind of crazy time. And I think we all need to put in our mind those type of things. And all that said, guys, we just want to thank you so much. We normally pray, but unfortunately, we're out of time. So we'll pray. We'll be praying for you guys and Liar Liar with Jim Carrey. Yeah, you want to watch a really great, great comedy? Jim I'm Carrey. Kicking my I'm own kicking ass. my own ass. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a funny film. And hopefully, you guys, otherwise, hopefully, you find this useful. And if you have, please, you know, go to our Instagram or go and post on Instagram. Please go look also Share. on our, um, well, we have it on our, what do you call it? Instagram. I was thinking podcast pages. Podcast. Go there and share with your friends. Let people know because we really want to get it out there. We want to let people know. I know time. we're running out of time. That's why I'm wrapping this up. And just please let us everyone know. We're trying our best, guys, to help our industry right now, but I can't do it all alone by myself. We need people like you to pass on the word and get everyone all excited. But otherwise, guys, we'll be back here next Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time here every hopefully as long as we're doing this guys and we will have this up online on our, our podcast hopefully later tonight we wish you guys the best otherwise have a great weekend and we'll see you again on monday bye guys i was afraid you were gonna you just wanted to be here right at our feet you little wing